Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, well, random reviews from the overflow room. And now we are into the letter U. We finished the V's. Yes, we finished the V's. There aren't a lot of U's. In fact, we're going to do some U's, and then we're going to overflow into the T's. So we might as well wrap up some of them as well, unless I have more of them. I don't think so. I think this will do it for this particular composer. So what do we got for you? Well, you starts with a singer, Dawn Upshaw, one of the most sensitive concert singers, certainly of the 20th century. She's a wonderful, intelligent singer with a lovely voice and a really smart knowledge of what she can do. And she made three recital discs at least. There may have been more, but I've got three of them here on Nonsuch. And there's really cool stuff here. We have the Orchestra of St. Luke's and David Zinman with arguably one of the best ever versions of Barber's Knoxville, summer of 1915. Uh, Mildred, come here. That's Mildred whining there. I don't know if she's going to come in here, but oh, there she is. Oh, it's Finster. Hello. You want to come say hi? You want to just sit there? Okay, you can sit there if you want. Anyway, um, we've got Barber, Knoxville, summer of 1915. Piece of music, as I've always said, that kind of drives me crazy. As you know, it's, you know, there I am, a little person sitting on the street, on the porch, and the people are sitting in the... I know, it's, it's a perfect bit of Americana, small town Americana in Knoxville in the summer of 1915. So anyway, this is about as well done as it can be. You know, it's growing on me because I've been talking about it, so I've been listening to lots of versions of it. And it really is an amazing setting of words and music when you think about it. I mean, the whole issue is how happy you are with the, with the words that the music describes, but it's very beautiful. And Upshaw sings it so perfectly with that wonderful combination of innocence and warmth, and it's just great. And then we've got, uh, oh, uh, Minotti. What a curse for a woman is a timid man. Recitative in aria from the old, maid, the old Maid and the Thief. And then John Harbison's Mirabai songs and Stravinsky's No Word from Tom from The Rake's Progress. I remember when this came out, it just got rave reviews and deservedly so. It's as intelligent and beautifully done a recital mixing, mixing it's all contemporary music, but things that people have heard of, like Stravinsky's The Rake's Progress, with things that people have not, and, but that are eminently worth listening to. And it's extraordinarily beautiful, it really is. Then we've got the girl with the orange lips. Remember that one? Yes, there's the girl with the orange lips behind the fern. And this gives you, let's see, Manuel de Faya's Ciché, which is just gorgeous, like everything Faya wrote, six minutes long, but gorgeous. Ravel's Trois Poèmes de Stéphane Mallarmé, Stravinsky's Two Poems of Constantine Balmont, and three Japanese lyrics, and Earl Kim's Where Grief Slumbers, and Maurice Delage, Quatre Poèmes Hindu, three Hindu poems. Another sensationally interesting collection of stuff, mixing again familiar and unfamiliar contemporary pieces. These recitals were just amazing. They really are, and it's wonderful to rediscover them down here. And last but not least, um, The World So Wide. This was the third of these recitals, I think. Um, you get Copeland's Laurie's song from The Tender Land, John Adams. Um, this is Prophetic from Nixon in China. Bernstein's What a Movie from Trouble in Tahiti. Oh, God, is that a fun number. Amazingly, adorably funny. Tanya Leon's uh, Mother's Prayer uh, from, uh, from, let's see, Scourge of Hyacinths. Douglas Stuart Moore, Douglas Moore, the Willow Song from the Ballad of Baby Doe. Court Vile's Lonely House from Street Scene. Barber again, Give Me Some Music um, from Antony and Cleopatra, the giant failure that sent him into a, a, a drunken depression for most of the rest of his career, very sadly. And then Carlisle Floyd, Ain't It a Pretty Night from Susanna. Susanna's a wonderful opera, by the way. I saw it actually at the Met and it really worked. It worked really, really well. Was it at the Met or was it, was it City Opera? I don't even remember, but I love the piece. It really is a wonderful, wonderful retelling of the story of Susanna and the Elders. So there's Dawn Upshaw, and she goes there under the U's. And then we have to talk about, let's see, Victor Ullman. Absolutely, Victor Ullman, 
who was uh, you know, a remarkable Jewish composer who was, you know, Theresienstadt, his great work that he wrote about that time was Der Kaiser von Atlantis. Uh, really, really um, a, a gripping and amazing piece for the time in which it was written and prophetic and, and profoundly disturbing. And here we have his second symphony, which was, these are reconstructed. These are based on his piano sonatas, um, which he intended to orchestrate. And so, and they had to be reconstructed. So symphony number two, and then six leader for soprano and chamber ensemble. And Don Quixote tanced Fandango, an overture reconstructed from the short score by Bernard Wolf. All of these things had to be patched back together. And Symphony Number no. 1, From My Youth, which is based on the short score of the Fifth Piano Sonata, with uh, Juliana Bonsa, soprano, the Gersenich Orchestra of Cologne, and James Conlon. I have more Ullmann, but it's upstairs under you in the main collection, and this made it into the overflow room, I think, because I had most of this stuff elsewhere, probably. So that goes there. Then we have this Italian guy, Uccellini, Sonatas with Romanesca. Um, let's see, with performances that always produce revitalizing edge of your chair music, the award-winning ensemble Romanesca turns to the work of 17th century Italian maestro di cappella Uccellini, whose violin writing extended the instrument's range and whose compositions pushed the, the sonata to its highest point of development up to that time. Well, this is one of those wonderful discs featuring Andrew Manzi, who's now making a career as a conductor, but who was an unbelievably fabulous Baroque violinist, I'm an exciting Baroque violinist. And so you've got a bunch of sonatas and arias and dance things and whatnot. And they're lots of fun to listen to. Romanesca is Mansi, Nigel North, playing the Theorbo arch lute and Baroque guitar, presumably not all simultaneously. And uh, John Toll, harpsichord and organ, 65 fun-filled minutes of little Italian Baroque goodies. I know you love it too, don't you? And last but not least, uh, here we go. Some Christopher Ty, who was part of that fabulous English school of Renaissance composers working in the, well, when was he working? Who knows? In the, in the 1500s. Yeah, the 1500s. Um, an exact contemporary of Thomas Tallis. So if you like Tallis, you like Ty, and they both begin with a T. And there's Tavener, too. There's Tavener, Ty, Tallis, Ty. They all began with a T for some reason. So here we have Latin and English church music with the Choir of Magdalen College, Oxford, on Harmonia Mundi, um, with the Bird Recorder Consort and Richard Pinnell Organ, directed by Bill Ives. And here we have Ty and Mundi doing all kinds of things, including the Missa Huge Bone. I just love the title, Huge Boney, or Huge Bone Bone, you know, whatever that means. And I don't really care. And we also have his Omnis Gentis and William Mundy's Kyrie, because these masses were missing Kyrie's as often as not, um, and tenor parts and all other things, and Mundy's Magnificat and Ty's Peccavimus, which is 12 minutes long. It's quite a large and fascinating work. This is with the Oxford Camerata on Naxos with Jeremy Summerley. So Ty goes up here, and with that, my friends, we have embarked on the letter T, and you know what that means. It's going to be very, very exciting. I'm looking forward to doing that and working our way slowly through the T's. It's a major letter with some major, major composers. So thank you so much for giving this opportunity to dig around through the overflow room with you to get things refiled. I noticed that the echo is somewhat subsiding now that I'm surrounded by by things that break up the reverberation here. As the shells fill up, the reverberation declines. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>